Welcome to part three of the series on how to make a slim tower. In this particular uh, part, we want to focus on how to make the core for the slim tower. But before I do that, what I'd like to show you is my first two slim towers ever. This one here is number two, and this one is number one. As you can see, uh, t to be charitable to myself, I will use the word um, rough. They're rather rough in construction, and uh, it didn't. It, the Eureka moment didn't really come to me until uh, number three. Uh, but the only reason I show these to you is to point out that sometimes it just takes a little bit of perseverance, a little bit of hard work, and constantly learning something. And eventually, hopefully, you you can eliminate having a number two step or even a number one step and just go go directly to number 23 number 23 here okay well maybe it's not terribly likely everyone has to make a few mistakes or a few trial runs before they get really good I suppose in any case let's move on to the core now if we want to bring up our old friend the illustration what I'd like to show on the keychain cube is well, okay, let's try something a little different. What I'd like to show on this enlarged keychain core, standard Rubik's Cube, white pieces are unmodified, black pieces obviously modified. What I'd like to show on this keychain cube is that there are eight edge pieces that have been completely flattened out, uh, like you would see in a standard octagon barrel. So you have eight of these pieces four on each layer and then you also have these four corner pieces and these four corner pieces uh, basically are cut from one end to the other the way that the corners have been cut can be illustrated by this piece here which is nothing more than a standard Rubik's Cube corner the way I cut them is simply by removing approximately greater than 60 greater than 50 percent of the material from the cube and I cut it like so and like this and then if you look on the bottom of the, of the piece I cut it something like this now some might be asking well why not just uh, cut it in such a manner where uh, this open part is on the bottom instead of having to make extra cuts there well I'm not really going to get into the reasons why I specifically do what I do and leave a big gaping hole on one side which leaves a little bit a thin strip of material here that could potentially break um, but let's just say that for me it feels like having a solid bottom for these pieces to uh, rest against when they rotate against the middle, middle layer to me seems like it's a good idea and that's the way I make mine you don't have to do that you can certainly cut it you know from the bottom piece and expose the hollow against the middle layer but that's up to you the reason of course that we are cutting away approximately 50 percent maybe a little bit more in creating this is simply so that an edge piece can move with the middle layer of the keychain without meeting too much interference from the outside layers which will eventually uh, be put into place. So the middle layer needs to have enough clearance for the pieces. So in order to be effective at cutting the keychain cube, what I like to do is I like to keep the keychain together. Um, I will take it apart and realign the pieces so that they're aligned the way I like them to be. And then once I've done that, what I like to do is, if I'm cutting a corner for example, the corner piece, what I'll do is I'll rotate the puzzle at about a 45 degree angle exposing whatever piece it is that I want to cut then I'll take say my razor saw and once that 45 degree is aligned then I'll just proceed to rest it right there and just cut straight through and then make another cut at about you know 60 percent of the width or again if you don't uh, like doing that you could certainly just take your Dremel and just do the same thing cut away material um, in order to make sure that it's as rounded as possible what I like to do is I like to take the puzzle and 
when it's rotated at 45 degrees, that's where you made your initial cut. Just, uh, you know, move it up a little bit, move it to the side, and you can just as easily trim off with uh, whatever tool you're using. So once you have made all your pieces, and of course that's your eight edge pieces, and eight of these corner pieces, um, what you want to do is uh, glue one of the corners to one of the center pieces and two adjacent, adjacent edge pieces. And what I like to do is I like to find, it, especially if I'm working with a hollow one, and actually in this particular case I like using the hollow pieces. What I like to do is I like to turn up the hollow pieces and orient the edges in such a way where the big holes, the gaping holes, are facing, are exposed to the center. The reason I like to do that is I like to put a little bit of super glue in there, glue all the pieces together, and then once I'm done applying a little bit of super glue, if I like the alignment, I'll then go ahead and hit the holes with a little bit of epoxy, which I haven't done yet with this cube, this keychain, but uh, that's the plan. You put a little bit of epoxy in there and in, in here so it uh, sticks against this piece, and odds are it'll never come apart on you, at least not anytime soon. One thing I'd like to note is that in order to make sure that even these pieces uh, are glued very straight and, and aligned, what I like to do is I like to actually take the layer and rotate it a couple of times. And when you rotate it a couple of times, what happens is, of course, the pieces tend to fall into some natural alignment with each other, especially if you leave it at a, sorry, especially if you leave it at a uh, angle like this, the four pieces that you're intending, intending to glue together will naturally be uh, very well aligned next to each other because, well, they can't be, they can't be rotated out of alignment. And that's actually a very cool trick to know about other future puzzle builds as well. So keep them at a 45 degree angle, glue the pieces down, and again if you have the hollow pieces, drop a little bit of epoxy in there, or a lot more super glue if you want. I super glued this one pretty well. But I'll probably go back and put epoxy anyway. And then once you've done that, you've got yourself a nice beginning for a slim tower. And so let's recap a little bit here. Once you have your core, then you can take a look at the pieces that you may or may not have cut by now, and we'll again get back to the shapes of these a little bit later, but if you don't know how to make these shapes yet, you should be looking at part one. We can do a quick test fit. These two have been taped together. A really quick test fit to see how good our alignment is. We take our core, stick it inside, and hopefully it'll look pretty darn good. And this one definitely looks mighty tasty. So, in conclusion, the core, eight edges, eight corners, glue one corner to one center and two adjacent edges. Once you've done that, you are pretty much ready to start assembling the puzzle. And of course, the first step will be the middle edges, and that will be the most challenging part of the build. And if you're able to do that, then uh, you pretty much got this puzzle mastered. I would just like to point out that uh, this particular keychain um, was not made with a Dremel or a saw. It was made entirely with just uh, my X-Acto knife here. Uh, and again, I mean, if you're inclined to do it with just an X-Acto, you certainly can, but uh, you know, don't forget my standard warnings about X-Actos because you might go, ah, then you'll be in big trouble and end up in the hospital. I don't want that to happen to you.